thought and Chris has hit there, but he had the instability laid on over that and that's right where all this hot and humid air is and it is off the chart. So as this cold front approaches and the energy continues to build, that's going to provide that lift into the atmosphere needed to get these storms going and feed off that energy and get organized with our strongest winds coming in a lot. That's going to help to support that organization. Very large hail is going to be possible with the individual storms, the supercells that develop, we think, first. That could be two inches or greater in diameter. And then with time, I think we'll get that damaging wind threat where winds could be over 75 miles per hour, which is very destructive. As we take a look at the temperatures, you can really see where that warm front is right now, right? Near the Twin Cities, Omaha, looking at temperatures right into the triple digits right now. And there's that available energy and storms are starting to develop here right where we have a high amount of it. There's less to the north because that warmer air um, is not quite into that area. So here you can see the models indicating those thunderstorms starting to get going, then clustering together late tonight and diving down towards the south and east. Gradually, um, this is going to kind of become a little bit more parallel with, say, the Gulf Coast line, if you will, and it kind of becomes elongated across that area. But Chris, um, this is not great news. A lot of this is going to be happening while people are sleeping. They're going to need a way to get alerted. And we've got storms that are going to be right out of the gate early tomorrow morning. And eventually uh, parts of Illinois also will be in uh, the threat for some storms, including Chicago. So let's take a look right now. That was just this morning uh, in Sioux City, Iowa. The Big Sioux uh, connects here in uh, South Dakota into Northwest Iowa. So all these states, the tri-state area or Sioux land, if you will, um, the rising rivers and very treacherous conditions have caused the closure now of Interstate 29, north and southbound both from exit 2 to exit 26. So I think that's over 20 miles that we're dealing with. We're going to have the DOT, uh, Department of Transportation from South Dakota, that's going to join us in the next uh, after the next commercial break to have another update um, on what's happening there with I-29 and when that might uh, be open. It's really the main connection between northwest Iowa and southeastern South Dakota. It's also an area where folks from, say, um, North, North Sioux City, Nebraska will work their way over into South Dakota. Look at all of the triangles here. These are all river gauges that are in some stage of flood. The purple triangles are in major flood. Now, some areas have actually crested already. So that's what happened in Sioux City on the Big Sioux River. That's already happened in Spencer. But some of them are still on the rise. In fact, even in those Twin Cities, uh, the Mississippi River in St. Paul not expected to crest until maybe this weekend. And it's expected to go into major flood. Look at all the rain in the last seven days. Double digit rainfall in some of these areas. And if you just look at Sioux Falls alone, typically in the month of June, the entire month of June, you would have just over four inches of rainfall. Well, we've seen double that um, just through half, half of the month. That's it. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some more widespread flooding of what's going on in two parts of Minnesota. Chris? And we're also going to be watching what's ha happening and will be happening as the system moves into the north. Still. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, and they're going to stay high. It's not like flash flooding where, you know, things go up very quickly and they recede very quickly. It's that we have this huge watershed. And so a lot of these smaller rivers, creeks, and streams that are flooding already then work their way into the bigger tributaries like the Big Sioux, like the Missouri River, like the Mississippi River. So this is the flood forecast, river stages that are still going to be in flood five days from now. That's a lot of purple still. Yeah. From rain, a lot of that rain has already fallen. It just has to work its way into the bigger streams and rivers. So a lot of these forecasts account for 48 hours worth of rainfall in the future. So it should account for, the forecast should account for the rain that's on the way here tonight and into tomorrow. But anything beyond that uh, would be a concern. And uh, this right here is a flash flood warning issued a failure of a dam there uh, along a river. And uh, that's... Water going around, not being controlled anymore. Right, so this is south of Mankato. Um, there are some homes that are like literally teetering on the edge of the dam about to crash into it. Um, the dam hasn't breached yet, but there's all kinds of debris on the one side. And with the water flow, officials think that this is going to go at some point. Um, so folks downstream need to be very cautious. There's a look at the rainfall forecast still to come through Thursday. All right, so we'll take a closer look at the 
Welcome back to Storm Center. I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarris. Meteorologist Chris Warren's on the radar. We're going to get to him with the latest storms that he's tracking in just a moment. But this is going to be a big area to watch for the rest of this evening overnight into tomorrow for severe weather. And unfortunately, it's over areas that have already had a lot of severe weather over the last couple of days and way too much rain leading to a lot of flooding. So from Fargo to Duluth to the Twin Cities, stretching all the way down into Madison and Milwaukee, even Chicago, getting in on the severe weather threat uh, tonight and we could see all forms or all hazards of severe weather including large hail damaging winds and um, also could be seen a lot of uh, damaging winds that could be over 75 miles per hour so apparently my computer is locked up so let's get to those storms right now shall we yeah got this is going to cross over the mississippi this is going to cross over the st croix and get into uh, northwest wisconsin maybe over towards hudson then working its way towards Black River Falls, maybe into Green Bay, Milwaukee, Madison, all in that risk area. So a complex of storms is expected to develop that could produce some extreme winds. We're talking over 75 miles per hour. And then storms could also produce some very large hail around two inches or greater in diameter. So we think the large hail is going to come first with storms as they develop this evening. And then with time, we're going to start to see more clustering of these thunderstorms and it develops into this Boeing segment where winds are most likely to be damaging. Now, we couldn't rule out a little bit of embedded rotation within there, but I think wind will be the primary risk. If our future radar is correct, and it's been predicting this for quite a while, this would almost be pushing to ratio type status. So I'm not sure that the coverage or the, the area will quite be big enough to meet that criteria, but you get the idea that these winds could be damaging and you need to get alerted while you're sleeping. Now, tomorrow we'll be watching the I-80 quarter and areas southward. Um, our risk of storms becomes more oriented towards the west to the east. So areas along I-80, I-70 as an old boundary from thunderstorms will likely trigger additional showers and thunderstorms and our frontal system then kind of becomes a little bit more elongated with this too. But all the ingredients are going to settle up uh, for more severe storms. Again, especially damaging winds. Chris? And Jack. It's really fascinating when you think about it, the thousands of miles that this travels and actually gets into the United States. It can bring some really pretty sunrises and sunsets. People who have asthma, it's not so good for them. But It's always something to, to, to get your mind around, that the weather can start in Africa as a wave coming off, but right. also from Africa, something that can also inhibit it as well. It's just mind-boggling that these monster storms that can make landfall in the U.S. can have their origins in Africa. Everything is connected. So we're at the beginning of the Atlantic tropical hurricane season. We had tropical storm Alberto, so we've got one um, off the list, but still 97% of the season remaining. And here's a, a look at the rest of the names uh, that are. It's Chris. <laughs> there's a, yeah, well, it's there's a Chris. A there's a Debbie, there's an Ernesto. Got a lot. Yeah, we got a lot. Um, so we've got that disturbance out there right now. It is expected to be a very active season. No telling when the next one, though. So stay tuned. To look at tomorrow's trouble spots tonight, as we'd like to do this time of the day on Storm Center. And I think the Midwest is going to be a target zone for issues related to the weather, weather yet again. Places like Chicago and Des Moines, Detroit, Cleveland, all with slowdowns at the airports, especially early in the day. But then things could struggle again later in the day as new storms begin to develop across the region. As we take a look at some of the interstates, Interstate 70, I-29, again, may still have problems. Problems may be closed there into South Dakota. I-80 across central Iowa, moving across northern parts of Illinois with showers and thunderstorms that could be severe. We've had our daily sea breeze thunderstorms already today in Florida. Tomorrow, that will be a problem as well. That could cause some standing water on some of the roadways and some minor delays at the airports. Warren? Hey, Jackie.